here is an interesting case from the emergency room. And it's interesting for a variety of reasons. So let's just look at it once very quickly, and then we can discuss them. So we're scrolling from top to bottom. It's a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis with oral and intravenous contrast. And one of the reasons this case is interesting is because it tells you that the most obvious finding is not necessarily the one that is of significance. So the thing that immediately catches your eye is that there's this large lesion in the liver. And the fact is that the patient presents with left upper quadrant pain. Now, there is no right-sided pain. And if you look carefully at this liver lesion, it's got some very typical features, which is that it's centrally low density, but it's got these little collections of contrast enhancement around its periphery. Uh, puddles of contrast as they've been described in the literature. And this appearance is very, very typical of a hemangioma. In this case, it's a particularly large hemangioma. So this is actually an incidental finding in this case, but uh, the reason I'm spending a couple of minutes on it is to illustrate the concept that what catches one's eye is not necessarily what's of acute significance. And so one should not fall prey to the challenge of search satisfaction. So let's go back and focus on where the patient's symptoms are, which are the left upper quadrant. When we look at the left upper quadrant, we see that there is a hypodensity in the spleen. And it's a fairly subtle hypodensity, but it's there. And the margins of the splenic capsule are a little bit fuzzy right around where this hypodensity is. And we see this kind of fuzzy margins, this kind of fat stranding, usually the finding is acute. So uh, let's assume that this is an acute finding in this patient with left upper quadrant pain. What do we think it is? So it's non-enhancing, it's peripheral, it's subcapsular, and it's somewhat wedge-shaped. So when you see this combination of findings in the spleen, the thing that one thinks about include a splenic infarct. Now, why would a patient who has not too much going on by way of atheromatous changes in the vessels have a splenic infarct? So let's go back and start looking at where this infarct could have originated from. And some of you may have seen the finding already because I paused on it for a minute or two. But those of you who hadn't seen it earlier, here it is. This patient has a thrombus in the left ventricular apex. And if we look closely, we can also identify the cause for the thrombus, which is that there is an apical infarct in the left ventricle, which has become calcified. And these kind of uh, scars from infarct tend to be thrombogenic. And so the thrombus has formed in the left ventricle, and a piece of this has embolized and entered the splenic artery and resulted in the splenic infarct. So uh, this is an interesting case because, A, as we said, the, the most obvious finding was not the one of relevance, and B, because it allows us to see both the cause and the effect uh, of the pathology here. Uh, the presenting uh, issue is the splenic infarct, but the etiology, which is the thrombus in the left ventricle, is also demonstrated on the CT scan. So. When we're looking at CT studies in patients who present with acute conditions, we must remember that we should look not only for the diagnostic finding, but if we can, the etiological finding as well, which allows us to provide more clinical information to the clinician and give, allow them to treat the patient appropriately. That's all. Thank you.